Welcome to Pixel Art College course. I'll be your professor, Pixel Pete. So I don't actually know if there's a college course in Pixel Art, but hey, why not? I'll be the first, right? I'm one of the artists working on Dwerve, and I'll teach you how to do pixel art like this. However, first we gotta start by talking about software. So there are a lot of pixel programs to choose from, but I think these three are worth mentioning. Um, each one of them has its strengths and weaknesses. It's, this is Photoshop, Assy Sprite, I think I'm saying that right, and Pixel Edit. But let's not forget the best one of them all, MS Paint, yeah baby. I'm just kidding, but if you're pixeling on a budget, that's free. I'm gonna give away a copy of Assy Sprite and Pixel Edit by the end of the video, and I've only got like 400 something subscribers, so you got a pretty good chance at winning the copy. In Photoshop, go to File, New, set your resolution to 72 dpi, and uh, leave it at 8 bit. You don't need 16 or 32. Let's go. So in Photoshop, the default brush um, looks like this, but we want it to be a pixel brush, right? So to make it a pixel brush, you um, right click on it and switch it to the pencil tool. And you wanna do the same thing with the eraser. Up at the top, it's probably gonna be set to brush, set that to pencil. This way you don't get anti-aliasing when you erase. So you might be wondering, well, what is anti-aliasing? Here I have the pencil tool, and as you can see, um, the edges are very jagged, but you actually want that in um, pixel art. If I switch it to the brush tool, if I zoom in here, you can clearly see the difference. What anti-aliasing does is it fades it. And it does look smoother, but when we're doing pixel art, we don't want things to look smoother. Our resolution is gonna be so tiny that things like this um, are really not meant for pixel art. If you want a preview window, you can go to Window, Arrange, and here at the very bottom, there's a new window. If we switch to it, it's the same thing, but you can drag it out and check this out. Let me zoom out in here. You can move this in the top right corner and now you have a little preview window. All right, so I'll just give one more tip for Photoshop and that is grids. So you can turn on um, a grid and uh, you should probably make it 16 by 16 if you're doing 16 by 16 um, tiles, right? So you go to edit, preferences, grid guides and slices. And here, let's just make this um, 16. And what the subdivisions are is if you set it to, um, if you set it to one, that's when you will actually have 16 by 16 tiles. Oh God, I don't think you can see that in the video. Let me zoom in. There. Photoshop also has uh, snapping and it'll snap near the edge. If that's annoying you, you can also go to, um, uh, prefer uh, you can go to view and over here you can change your snap settings. If you're doing pixel art, I would, I would turn off snapping. You don't need that stuff. All right, let's move on to the next program. Now let's quickly cover a sprite. One of the first things that you'll want to do before you start drawing is to go at the top here and click pixel perfect. Let me show you what that does. I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm going to draw really slowly. And I'm just dragging diagonally. And as you can see, my line looks kind of thick. Um, this is called doubles in pixel art. And if you click pixel perfect and do the same thing, it won't allow for doubles. Next, something pretty helpful would be if you go to view, <clears throat> there's a couple of windows here that don't always uh, pop up. So if you wanna do animations, you would choose timeline. I like to just keep that on. And also you can go to symmetry option. And symmetry option is great for when you're first starting to draw maybe a character's face or something like that. So let me just show you this real fast. Pretty neat, right? So when you're drawing a character, it makes it a lot easier. I see Sprite has a lot of cool tools and one of them is the contour tool. Basically, if you just draw a shape, when you close it, it auto fills it. If you press spacebar, you can drag your canvas around. In the top here, there's a selection tool and that's also where the magic wand tool is. Cool thing about the selection tool is you can select something like, um, let's say his hair here, and let's say I wanted it to be taller. I can just click up a couple times to move it up and then I can grab the bottom edge and drag it down. Pretty cool, right? It's also how I modified the size of this uh, border here. So at the bottom you, here, you can see my timeline. This is also what the layers are like. It's a lot like flash. And if I click the plus here, boom, 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 boom. I'm making frames and that's uh, for animation. But if you go to layer, um, new layer, which is also shift N, you create, um, you create different layers. So for example, you might want to uh, move Dwerve. Something a little annoying is you, by clicking on the layer, you can't actually move it. You have to go near the edge of it. So I'll move Dwerve up here and then let's just color the background yellow. You can press tab to quickly open and close the layers. All right, let me show you some uh, color palette stuff. So you can press the delete key to delete any color that you want. 
If you have it unlocked and selected, you can change the color of it. By dragging to the right, you create a whole bunch of more uh, colors here, but they're all black. If you go to the last one and then you change it to um, another color, if you hold left click and you drag between those two colors from uh, the sorting, you can actually choose gradient and it'll create the gradients for you right there. Um, you can also sort them by saturation, brightness, all sorts of other stuff. So one more thing that I recommend is that you switch into the color wheel. And the reason is because uh, with the color wheel, it's a lot easier to do color theory. So in the top right corner near your color wheel, this is where you can choose a bunch of color theory stuff like complementary colors or split complementary. And it creates a little palette for you in the bottom right corner. It's pretty convenient and can be really helpful when trying to find um, good colors. For example, this composition that I did right here for one of, um, for concept art for Dwarf Biome. So the way that I like to work is to have my preview window open and my color selection window open here. The RGB stands for red, green, blue, and A is for alpha. I don't really like to use this to select my colors. I like to use HSV. Here we have hue, saturation, and I'm assuming V is for vibrance or something like that. It's much easier to, for me, mentally, to pick colors using this. All right, finally, lastly, pixel edit, which you probably haven't heard of, but I love it. So pixel edit's specialty is creating tile maps, and you can create a scene and see how those tile maps would look. Here are a couple that I've created for my work. Disregard them being in black and white, you can definitely use colors in pixel edit. But as, I, but as you can see, if I, if I change um, one tile, it changes, it updates all of them. So it's a really great way to see what your scene would look like, to see what your environments would look like as you're making the tile maps. You can also export the image that you create or the tile set. In my opinion, A Sprite is the best software for pixel art. For me, it was just missing the tile feature. However, I spoke with the developer and they're going to be adding that in. So I might not even end up using Pixel Edit in the future. Your homework is to get at least one of these programs and start getting used to it because next episode, we're jumping right in. So I'm giving away a copy of A Sprite and Pixel Edit because both developers were pretty generous and gave me a copy for this video. Isn't that nice? In the comment section below, just let me know which one you want. You just have to be subscribed and follow me on Twitter. I'll see you in next week's lesson. DevLive.